Let me take that to a slightly different but similar topic. It's just something that's been on my, my mind a lot. Um, I don't actually have them on right now. I wish I did. It'd be good for this, this speech. Um, for, for those of you who were at Summit, when we were at Summit, we got these little bracelets that were like, just like to identify us as like, yeah, those things are the blue and white ones right there. To identify us as like, so we came in and out of the room so they, they know we're there. Um, so as an instructor, like Nick came over to me and just like handed me a bracelet. I'm like, what the fuck? People know who I am. Why do I need this? Right? But I thought about it and I thought it would actually be really cool for me to wear it. And the reason I thought, and this is very like arrogant and weird, but I thought like, um, you know, everybody wears those like, this, you guys are gonna think I'm really fucking narcissistic when I say this, like more, more so than you ever did. Um, but uh, it's like, you know how there's those bracelets that are like the, the Lance Armstrong, like Live Strong bracelets, or like the What Would Jesus Do bracelets or whatever? I thought about it and I was like, if I wear that, it's like me wearing a like What Would Todd Do bracelet. <laughs> Which I think is really cool. Like it's Todd wearing a What Would Todd Do bracelet. Which is ironic and kind of fucked up, but I actually really, really like it at the same time because when I think about it, I'm really proud of what I do for a living. I'm really proud of being a part of RSD because it brings the best out of me. Or especially like with the, with the immersion program and people looking up to me and like me having to live an ideal life because they are expecting me to. They're expecting me to be a role model. Um, and so I think to myself like what would I do at my best? What would I do if I wasn't backing down? What would I do if I was trying like striving for true excellence, right? So it's that what would, what would Todd do? Um, but the idea being try and be your best self. Try and be your best self, try and live a life that you're proud of. And the overarching idea that I've had for a really, really long time that I try and ask myself on decisions, and I fuck up on this a lot, I really do, is is this an act of self-love? Whenever you make a decision, ask yourself, is this actually an act of self-love? And it's tricky. It's very tricky. Because sometimes opening a set is an act of self-love. Sometimes, excuse me, sometimes opening a set is an act of self-hate. Seriously, right? Say that you like for not now, say I'm, I'm super busy, I'm running, I'm working six days a week, hitting up girls, um, banging more girls than I should, uh, I'm behind on every single work project I have going on. If I see some girl in the daytime who's like cute but not that hot and is a little bit inconvenient, at this moment, for me to approach her is almost like an act of self-hatred. Do you understand that? Right, because I don't have the time for it. I have other more important things going on in my life. Right now, I do plenty of approaches because I have uh, for, uh, how many hours a week? It's twenty, like almost forty hours a week, where I'm actually being paid to approach girls. Okay, so I will approach girls on my paid to approach girls time, and then on the other time, that's my me time now. You know what I mean, and so actually to approach if a girl's a ten, if a girl's fucking stunning, super hot, then it's an act of self love. Or if she, she like says something amazing to me that really captures my imagination just randomly, now it's an act of self-love because now it actually is worth something to me. But when I'm just doing it because it's some like little mediocre girl that I've had before and it, after, I, after I fuck her, like five minutes later, I'll feel like stressed that I didn't get work done and like I've just had another Groundhog Day, that's actually an act of self-hatred in a certain way. Right? And this came up in Boston. Somebody asked me the question of, um, I feel like a chode if I see a girl and I don't approach her. Right? I mean, I, at first you know, I had approach anxiety, now I don't have approach anxiety, but now I, I walk around and every single time a girl walks by and I don't approach her, I feel like less of a man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, kind of, that's kind of ridiculous, right? It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> now, again, if you're, if you're not approaching the girl because you're scared, or because you don't think you can get her, or because you have some sort of entitlement issue, that's fucking show. That, don't do that. All right? That's an act of self-hatred. That's an act of rejecting yourself before the girl rejects you. And you should never, ever, ever reject yourself. But if you legitimately have something else to do, if you legitimately have better things going on, you legitimately have other girls to approach, et cetera, then it's okay. Yeah, okay? On walk to work every single day. Yeah. So one thing for that, if it's on the walk to work, walk to work earlier. <laughs> yeah? Leave yourself 15 extra minutes and then you can do it. So that's, that's another, that's a lifestyle thing and that's to be done for sure. But the point is, at that moment, if it's actually negative to your life, don't do it. But, but be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Right? When you have that moment of not approaching, just take a second and be like, am I scared or am I being practical? And if even like 10% you think you're being scared, go do it. It's better for you in the long run. You gotta when you were uh, being perfectionist, when you first started practicing, how did you get yourself to start practicing? Um, I made my perfection differently focused. Instead of being perfectionist about the girl liking me, I made it perfectionist about my own effort. I made it a rule for myself that I would approach every girl. So I actually started with the, you know, the opposite of what I just said, 
right? When I did have approach anxiety, it was my rule that if I see a girl that I want to approach, I have to approach her. And, and no matter how it goes, I'll feel better about myself. And I always did because that was the thing I was working on, right? And then now, that's not what I'm working on. Now I talk to too many damn girls all the time. I'm working on trying to put out better videos for you guys. I'm working, about, working on talking to girls when I'm actually on film, working on editing it, I'm working on all kinds of different projects like that. So now that's not where I'm at. Um, there will come a time when maybe I'll go back to that at some point. But it's just, it's just where you're at in your life. Ask yourself, actually, I, I say this almost every speech, ask yourself what you really want out of the game. Um, I'm also going to add to that, ask yourself what you really want about, out of life. Like imagine the life you want and ask yourself if your actions that you're taking are getting you there. Right? Again, all this simple, stupid bullshit like seems so common sense, but people don't do it. People don't do it. Are the actions you're taking getting you where you want to go? Right? If I, if I talk to a girl in the club all night who's like boring me and only mildly attractive, I just wasted my night because I'm, that's nothing for me. Right? I need to swap up. I need to go talk to like a hotter girl. I need to go get myself in a mixed set. I need to go help one of my students. I need to do something. Right? That's a waste of time for me at this point because it's not pushing my boundaries anymore. That's not what I'm working on. Right? Also, if I, um, if I start seeing six girls a week going on all these dates and like don't hit the gym, don't sleep properly, don't get any work done, is that getting me where I want to be in life? It's short-term pleasure. It's like the little, the little orgasms of pleasure which make you keep, go, keep doing it. But is it what you really want out of life? Right? And at a certain point, it's not. If you're a newbie, disregard everything I'm saying right now. <laughs> if you're a newbie, approach every girl. Don't give yourself any excuse ever because at a certain, at a certain level, you need to do that. Because that is, hopefully, for especially guys who are here and who are newbies, that's something you are working on in life. Getting it to the point where approaching a girl is nothing for you. right? So it's not that I'm saying take this action, it's right, take this other action, it's wrong. It's very subjective. It's very subjective to you what the right or wrong actions are. But um, have a realistic idea of your goals, have a vision, and ask yourself continuously, is this in alignment with my vision? How do you reconcile with, um, I have like, you know, like the whole like Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs, oh I need this, 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 and this to do this. Mm -hmm. I know it doesn't make sense, but like I feel like, okay, if I'm not doing certain things like going to the gym or getting reading or meditating, then like, oh, I can't talk to this girl because my mind's not right. And it's like, you know, I'm Jedi mind tricking myself. How, how do you get out of that, like, you know, that loop? All right, there's two ways. Um, actually, maybe like probably a hundred ways, but I'll give you a few different ways. Um, number one is to realize that the very fact that you're thinking that makes you worthy of her, right? Most guys don't think that. Most guys don't care about improving themselves. Most guys don't want to be better. The very fact that you're thinking, I should be better to get this girl, is the reason why you're the type of guy who she should be with. Do you understand that? Right? So like, the very reason why you're thinking no is the very reason why yes. Okay? That's number one. Number two way to look at it, and this is the way I actually look, that, that, that's it's a good way to look at it. Here's the, here's the way I actually have looked at it from like, my very, very young, young days, um, is there are certain things that are just not helpful thoughts. And even if they're true, they're just not helpful thoughts. All right, for example, I am five foot seven ish, something like that. All right, is the thought that girls like tall guys a helpful thought for me? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, am I aware that the reality of the world is that girls like tall guys? Yes. In fact, my profile on online dating says I'm five foot ten. <laughs> I am very aware of it. I am very aware. I have never had a girl come meet me and object to my height in person. It has never happened because I'm cool as shit in person and I know I will be. Now, I, I understand that that's the system. I understand that girls are looking at a certain metric and they'll filter out certain guys that are not of a certain height. I don't want to get filtered out. I recognize that reality. I'm actually objectively aware of that reality. However, even though I'm objectively aware of that reality, I know it's not a helpful thought. I have to think to myself on another level, like on like the pimpin' level, that I am the best fucking man ever. I bring the best genetics that have ever existed in a man to a girl, and that she'd be very lucky to have me. Okay. Like here's actually this is funny. I had this thought. I was in the I was in the airplane today, looking at like the the mirror, the airplane mirror in the bathroom, and I was thinking to myself, what a genetic specimen I am. <laughs> I really was. I really actually was. I was like, I, I, for all the girls out here, this is why you should have my babies. Okay. Um, I have not been sick since I was 15. I have perfect teeth, I have never had braces, I have perfect eyesight, 
Um, and I was a semi-professional athlete and I have a genius IQ. So have my babies, <laughs> right? And whatever it is, whatever it happens to be for you, right? For you, it can be like, I'm, I'm tall, muscular, black, well-hung probably, you know, who knows what? <laughs> like, whatever it is, whatever your particular assets are, that's what you bring to the table. And just, you should be narcissistic about them and you should think that's what really matters, okay. right? So I'm, I'm aware that certain girls may have the idiotic and misguided notion that a tall guy is better, but that's because they haven't had me. And that's because they've never, you know what I mean? I'm of the notion that I have a low center of gravity and I'm quick and maneuverable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of kidding. But the point is, I think I'm perfect. So although I recognize that the stereotype exists in the world, I disacknowledge it as fact. Does that make sense? All right. So that's another thing. Um, and then the other thing is that even when you do get to be that, that guy that has all those things, two things. Number one, when you get to be that guy that has all those things, you'll still see more things that you should have. You're never going to be complete. You're never going to be complete, but you have to start living life. Right? Are you going to wait till you're 70 to start living life because that's when you're like complete? That's when you've done your life's work? Right? That's just silly. That's just absolutely silly. So just live it now and realize that the work that you put in now, the failures even now of like not being worthy and trying, are what will make you better when you are worthy if it comes to that. Right? So it's weird, so I just gave you three very conflicting thoughts that all contradict each other in a weird way, right? Yeah. But if you can somehow, like, e all of them individually are helpful, and if you can somehow hold them all in your head at the same time, that's brilliant. If you can't, pick the one you like and go with it. It's all about the maps. And stuff. Huh? It's all about the maps and just how you look at it. Exactly, exactly. It's, uh, um, we go finance. Like Charlie, do you know, doesn't, who knows who Charlie Munger is in this room? A few people, nice, nice, I like it, I like it. So he has this whole concept of a lattice work of models, right, which is that <laughs> there's a model for how this works, and a model how th for how this works, and they're not necessarily all the same. It's not like he has like the one like God model for life, like where he has the answer to everything, but he has a lot of models for how the world works, and he uses whatever model is most applicable to the situation. I think that's the best way to think, okay. right? Make sure that the models you have are useful to you though. Reject unuseful models, even if they're accurate. Even if they're accurate, reject unuseful models. Okay. I used to be like a really devout musician mm -hmm. and uh, kind of hampered my social life. That's what got me into the game. So, I don't know. I, I really liked the game like as soon as I got into it because, I don't know, it's, it was for me, I guess. And uh, it became a big part of my life. And then, obviously, like music started to wane a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm at this point where I feel like I can do whatever it is I want to do. But it's like, I don't really know what direction to go in. And I, like, I love a lot of things. It's not just those two things in particular. Like, I just want to live, like, a really cool lifestyle. So what's the question? Exactly. I know, like, you went to play poker. I'm sure you had to be really passionate about it. So how do you deal with picking what you wanted at that certain point in your life and where to go about it? It's a good, good question. I wish I knew the answer to it. <laughs> no, it's a good question. Um, it's funny because you guys are actually asking me a lot of my own sticking points right now. Like literally on stage right now, you're asking me a lot of my own sticking points. That's, that's another issue for me is, again, narcissistically, I'm pretty talented at a lot of things. Right? I was good academically. I could have gotten a mainstream job. I was pretty good at poker. I'm pretty good at pickup. I was actually a decent soccer player if I'd actually stuck with it. So there were different things I could have done. I had a lot of different talents. And um, it's tough. It's very, very tough. Because um, there's, there's two levels, two ways to think about it. One is to try and find your passion just organically. Find, find what you do naturally well and then trust that rich can be arranged. Right? There's a great, um, the, who, who's seen the movie The Color of Money? Random reference. Nobody watches these. Okay, cool. Color of Money. So there's this like, young pool hustler and this old pool hustler. And um, the young guy is like, talking about like, how he has talents in these various areas and there's like, lucrative areas that he should get into and stuff. But he's like one of the best in the world at pool. And he enjoys playing pool. And the old man says to him, look, if you have an area of excellence, rich can be arranged. Right? If you are the best at something, you can arrange to be successful with it. So that's one way to look at it, is to say, where do I spend my time? Uh, what am I good at? And then try and find a way to turn that into what you do for a living. And that's what I did with pickup. That's what I did with pickup. I didn't get into pickup. I never, I never planned to be a pickup instructor. I never set out with the idea of, I want to teach pickup. I set out with the idea of, I like doing pickup. I wish I could do it more often. How can I do it more often? Right? And so then I thought about um, teaching just, not to teach for money, but just teaching to support myself to be able to do more pickup. 
that's how I started out teaching. And then I went to RSD and I interned and I actually paid money. To, I like paid them to have me intern, like significant, huge amounts of money actually, ridiculous amounts of money, um, just so that I could do more pickup and so I could do it better. And so that was my drive and my passion was I just wanted to do more of it. My vision of life, like the thing that I found most fun was doing pickup. So I'm like, fuck it, this is what I'm gonna do. And, um, and whatever comes of it, I always have fallbacks, but I'm gonna go with it because this is what's amusing to me and this is what engages my brain. And I got lucky, I guess. Lucky, talented, whatever. And I don't know if rich is arranged, but like supporting myself is arranged. So that works out. Um, the other way, though, is, and I think this is really important too, is that I don't think a lot of people necessarily start out passionate about what they do. A lot of people make their own passion. They decide to be passionate about it and they find a passion or they find a way to find meaning in it. Okay? Um, another movie reference. See how, how good you are with movies. Um, you guys see the movie Without Limits? Nobody watches, that's, that's like required viewing. Only because it's my favorite movie of all time. It's a great movie though, great movie. Uh, biography about Steve Prefontaine, who was one of the greatest uh, distance runners in American history. Um, yeah, very, very good movie. But there's a, there's a speech at the start of that movie. The track and cross country coach at the University of Oregon is giving a speech to his, like, his men. And he says, running, one might say, is an absurd pastime over which to be exhausting yourself. But I'll guarantee you this. If you can find meaning in the type of running you have to do to stay on this team, you'll be able to find meaning in another absurd pastime, life. All right? I really like that quote because the idea there is that whatever silly little thing you're doing, if you find excellence in it, if you find a way to, to find meaning in it, then it doesn't have to have inherently been the right thing. You can make it the right thing. And you probably have a, a wide range of talents. There are probably 20 different things you could do in life. Like when you were born, there were probably 100 different career paths you could go on that you could have been excellent at, been successful at, and had an amazing life at. Right? And you know, if there were alternate universes, maybe you would have been on all these different life paths. But as it is, you kind of have to choose one because any of them you could choose and do amazingly, but you can't choose all of them and do them amazingly. If you try and choose all of them, you'll do them terribly. Right? And so at a certain point, it isn't even necessarily about choosing the right thing. It's about choosing something that is good and making it the right thing. Okay? For example, poker for me was one of the most educational experiences I've ever had. Um, because I, was, I am not a naturally talented poker player. Poker was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. For me. Okay? Because I don't focus well. I don't focus well at all. I liked playing hands of poker, but watching everybody else play and trying to like pick up tells and pick up how they play and, and do all that was the hardest thing ever. And, and the things I had to do to myself, the games I had to play with myself, the ways I had to get in my own head to make me focus, um, it taught me more about life than maybe anything I've ever done. It became a meditation. It became a pursuit of excellence. It became something I was proud of on a day-to-day -day basis. And it became, um, I don't know, an, an, ex an expression of like testing my own limits, right? And so in that sense, even though I quit poker now, I, I, haven't, played, I, I haven't played for actual money in a real game in like over two years since I, since I came back to RSD. Um, but it taught me so much about myself and it's because I just decided this is the path I'm doing and I'm going down it and I'm gonna make it happen. So that's the other way to go. So my advice, I guess, would be start with a path that you at least think is fun and that you at least don't find completely unpalatable but then within that said, choose it and do it absolutely. And do it absolutely for a period of time. And if you don't like it after that period of time, quit. You're young. Right? And then do something else, but do it with passion. 